Hey guys, Dwight Renfield 86 here with the second part of my video of my top 50 most viewed films. We hadn't gotten through all the non horror, so now we're going to start with the horror. Now, I'm going to try and keep this video shorter than the last one, so I'm probably only going to really talk heavily about the premise of the more uncommon titles, but the common titles that everybody probably knows and owns, I'm not going to talk about them because I know most of y'all have seen these, so I'm just giving my two cents, but there are a couple of them that, you know, I might, it might do me good to explain a little bit, like the first one, Stephen King adaptation, Riding the Bullet, this is a sweet-ass fucking flick, you know, uh, takes place in the 60s, this dude's in school, and, you know, he finds out his mother's done had a heart attack, and he has to, like, travel, he has to hitchhike across several like a state or two and try and get home in the middle like on halloween night and he gets picked up by this car and it's this dead guy who's like telling them you know he's if he's either him or his mom's gonna die and he gets to choose and you know it takes place in the 60s and it's got a lot of good tunes in it and that makes it awesome and you know i just don't hear this one really talked about a whole lot so i i thought i had to include it on the list because, you know, and I watch it a whole lot. And uh, before I go on any further, I just want to say, you know, these are my most watched movies now, and some of them would definitely stay on the list. But this list will vary because, you know, I mean, of course, I always, you know, I get hooked on either a new movie or one that I used to watch. And so, you know, with the exception of some titles, this list will vary. Like, I'll probably do this a list similar to this later on in the year, and I'm sure there'll be some different movies on the list. But... These are just the flicks that I'm watching the most at the present time, you know, in the last couple of months or so. The next one is a common title, Creep Show. This is just a standard uh, Warner Brothers Blu-ray. I'm going to get a better edition. You know, I mean, y'all all know this. My favorite anthology film. Uh, it's got Ed Harris, Ted Danson, Leslie Nielsen. A lot of good people in it. A lot of memorable scenes. I remember this movie scared the shit out of me when I was like seven years old the first time I saw it. Wonderful flick. Talked about this one before. Hellgate. This is the Arrow release. And uh, this is really good stuff. It's it's really, it's a South African movie and it's, you know, it's known for its effects more than anything. And it's got some great effects and some great lighting. And you know, it's cheap and it's cheesy. But this is just one of those very, very fun movies to me. I, I just, I I enjoy it. I, I could watch this movie every other day at least. Maybe not every day, but definitely. I, I mean, I usually do watch this, put this movie in at least once every two weeks. And it varies depending. I mean, but yeah, this is, this movie gets a lot of airplay in my room. Next one's a, one of my favorite slashers. Alone in the Dark, Jack Palance, Martin Landau. Uh, this is an early New Line Cinema release. And, you know, I mean, most of y'all know about this, but it's about the three escaped mental hospital patients that break out and terrorize this doctor because they're crazy and they believe that he murdered their previous doctors, gone on to a new hospital. And one thing I can say about this, this is a movie with the score that just kills. I mean, I don't hear a lot of people talk about how awesome the score is, but especially like the opening scene in this one, when the music starts, whoo, you know the shit's about to hit the fan. But yeah, Alone in the Dark. Great stuff. Next one, Bubba Hotep, Don Coscarelli. Y'all all know what Bubba Hotep's about, man. I don't even have to get into that. But if you don't, you know, if you haven't seen it and... You haven't watched a review on it and you'd like me to shed my two cents on it please let me know and i would love to talk about it but i'm just kind of tired and i gotta get up and go to work in the morning but i wanted to get this video done tonight okay uh, next one i wanted to i i was more movies from this franchise almost made the list but i didn't want to overcrowd it so i just i picked the underdog that's right halloween three y'all all just hate on it don't y'all huh? i love it i think this is you know, I love the the other Halloweens, but I, this is my very favorite out of the Halloweens, and I love it because it's not about Michael Myers. It's about Irish cults and Halloween, and, you know, it's like, 
I think snakes coming out of a kid's head scares the shit out of me a lot more than a dude with a knife. You know, fucking, that's a lot of snakes. Anyway, Halloween 3. Uh, just watch this one, and I've watched it several other times. I can tell I'm going to watch it more, and that's a, a movie written and directed by Bobcat Goldthwait, and that's Willow Creek. This is a found footage Bigfoot movie, and I saw this, the trailer for it, and I was interested, and, you know, it's just really great, you know. I mean, it's, you know, I normally hate found footage movies, but, you know, I like Bigfoot stuff, and this one, you know, this this movie was fun. The ending really delivered, and, I mean, give it a world if you if you like Bigfoot stuff. This is quite enjoyable. Okay. Another movie with a really great score in it, Stephen King's Silver Bullet. I've talked about this one before. This one's great. I mean, you know, it's just... <clears throat> the werewolf is not scary looking. I'm sure you've heard people review this and say the werewolf kind of looks like a bear in this. But, the like, the scenes and the score and the way and the kills... The werewolf, he isn't scary for how he looks. But the scenes are just... They're suspenseful and the lighting. And this movie just works really well. I mean... I've always loved this movie. Anyway, Stephen King's Silver Bullet. Next, we have Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I love this movie. I watch it more than the first one. I mean, I love the first one, but this one's just like, oh, man. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong. So I'm staring over here. My dog keeps moving around acting crazy. I don't know what the hell's the matter with him. What the hell's the matter with you, boy? <laughs> anyway. But yeah, this one this one's great. Uh, I went and got this, took this to a horror convention in Tupelo, Mississippi, two years ago, and was going to get it signed by Bill Mosley, and I ended up buying a picture and uh, had him sign that instead. I'll show you all that in a future video. But yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre too, love it. <clears throat> Next we have Planet Terror. I mean, y'all all know this flick, but. Man, it's just great. I love the Bruce Willis cameo. Love Michael Bain in this. And, you know, I mean, the characters are great. The kills are great. I mean, I mean, normally I don't really care for Grindhouse stuff. But, man, Planet Terror. Boy, this movie packs a punch. Okay, back on Bigfoot-themed stuff, we have uh, Snow Beast. This is that made-for-TV movie I talked about, uh, they're going to be make. they just released it on Blu-ray, and I was kind of hesitant about getting it because I didn't think it was going to look that good. It's a little bit more than I want to pay. They want like 17 bucks for it, but I'll probably get it just to humor it because I love this movie. I mean, out of made-for-TV movies, this movie, I, I really enjoy it. I mean, the Yeti fucking, he tears some motherfuckers up in this movie, and it doesn't really show nothing. It's just, it's a lot of imagery and lighting and... You know, like Silver Bullet, it's just the scenes really delivering. I don't know. I really get down with this one on a regular basis. Snow Beast. Highly recommend it. All right. Next we have Phantasm, my favorite horror movie of all times. And this is just the uh, standard of Anchor Bay release. But, you know, there was a time when this was, before there was a Blu-ray release, this was rare as shit. You know, and I love this edition. I got it on Blu-ray, but I usually, I always watch my Anchor Bay edition. You know, the tall man, you know, the he, uh, he makes the spheres fly with his mind and transports the dead to a place worse than hell and he enslaves them. And, yeah, he's the tall man. You, you know what he does. My favorite movie, though, seriously. I said it's my favorite horror. It's probably my favorite movie ever. And then we had Phantasm 4 made the list too. And you know, I always talk about the holographic cover. I love this. You don't see this edition out much more. When you do, it usually doesn't have the slip cover. But Phantasm 4, the flashback scenes. It's got scenes from the first movie that were recorded and never used. And they use it in this in such a cool way. The ending scene's great. You know, a lot of people crap on this sequel, but... This is my favorite next to the first one. I like this one better than the second and the third one. And, you know, if you haven't seen it and you've seen some of the other Phantasm films, you need to watch this. This one is an eye opener, boy. Phantasm 4. Great stuff. 
Okay. Next we have Day of the Dead, and this is my this is the edition I really like. You know the snap case, two disc, and it's got the uh, the booklet in it. But yeah, y'all all know Day of the Dead. No need for me to elaborate on that. Wonderful stuff. Next we have Toby Hooper's The Fun House. This is the uh, Screen Factory edition with the slip cover and got the original artwork right there. You know, the kids, they go in a fun house, they're going to spend the night, and one kid ends up stealing some money from the dude who owns it, and then, you know, they're locked in there, and then the dude is inbred half-creature son come after him, and, you know, this is my favorite Toby Hooper movie ever. I like it better than Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This can't get enough of the fun house. I, I rock it out on a regular. Okay. Next, this would definitely be my second favorite John Carpenter next to Halloween. That is Christine. I just got this still book the other day. I really love it. Y'all know what Christine's about. No need for me to talk about that. It's good stuff. Christine's just as good as it gets. Okay, we have Fright Night. That is the Twilight Time release. That's not the one that just came out. This is the rare-ass one that... You know, I'm, I paid like a hundred dollars for this son of a bitch, but I love it. The quality's great, and you know, this is definitely a movie that I that I was willing to drop the coin for back in the days when I, this edition first came available. But yeah, definitely my favorite vampire flick. I mean, Chris Sarandon, Roddy McDowell. You can't go wrong with Fright Night. Lucille Fultz, she's the Beyond. This is the Grindhouse edition. I'm not gonna open it on this one. This is the Blu-ray with the it's got the soundtrack on it. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try and but I show I opened it in one of my earlier videos and the transfer's great and you know it's just I'm not really gonna try and talk about it because you really couldn't put the Beyond into words. But I will say that if you haven't seen this, this is for anybody who thinks they've seen it all. The scenes with such a low budget man they they're just awesome the, the meltdown scenes with the skin boiling and the and the blood gushing and then there's this one scene where tarantulas eat this dude he's paralyzed and he can't move and they're just tearing him apart and and the music's just killer and boy this <laughs> they they don't make them like this no more but most of you know that i mean but i'm sure there's somebody out there that Hasn't given the Beyond its attention, the attention that it deserves. So, I tell you now, abide, damn it. Next we have Black Roses. I always love this one. Love that picture in the middle. Yeah. This one's great. You know, one of my favorites from a child. Remember, I, I got in trouble in Sunday school for singing a song off of this movie. <laughs> Whenever all the other kids were singing, Jesus Loves the Little Children, I was singing... It's me against the world from Lizzie Borden. But, you know, it's like a a rock and roll band. They're, they're kind of metal, but they're like, you know, they're all monsters or demons. And they got this message about taking over the town. And that's what all their songs are about. And the kids start turning into monsters. And one of them shoots his parents. And, you know, some of them actually do like shapeshift. And, I mean, yeah. This is this is the definitive metal exploitation. I mean, you, you know, I really I regret now when I was making the list. Trick or treat didn't make the list because you know I love my metal exploitation and trick or treat definitely goes right next to it. So that that's going to be the one honorable mention that I'm going to mention, and I'm going to make another list, and it's it's going to make the next video, or I'm just going to do a video talking about it because it deserves it. But yeah. Def, I had to mention Trick or Treat, but yeah, Black Roses is awesome. Great music, great kills, you know, just 80s goodness. All right, next one we have The Burning. This is a slash, it's kind of like Friday the 13th. I like it a little bit better. It's got Jason Alexander in it. It's about Cropsy, you know, the camp counselor. These kids scare him and put a fucking animal skull with worms in it. And wake his drunk ass up, and there's a candle on, and he knocks it over, and sets himself on fire, and it burns himself real bad. And then he he comes back out of the hospital, and he starts killing kids at a totally different camp. And unbeknownst to him, one of the kids that did it is a counselor there, and 
he fucks some people up. I mean, most of y'all know the burning, but uh, just I said I wouldn't talk too much. Listen to me running my damn mouth. Uh, just got this edition of Pumpkinhead Scream Factory Blu-ray that transfers awesome. I mean, y'all know Pumpkinhead. I'm not going to say much about this, but uh, I will talk about this. Pumpkinhead 2. You know, this one's a cheaper one, and at some points it looks kind of like a made-for-TV movie. I don't know why I always thought this was like a... <laughs> this was made for USA, because I think it always came on USA and TNT and channels like that, and it just seemed like it was... You know, the movie's not nearly as good as the first one, but like I've said before, the kills in this deliver. And, you know, this this movie is genuinely, you know, it can genuinely throw you a scare if you've never seen it before. I mean, it's it's got atmosphere. As a child, it scared me just as well as the first one did. And there's one scene that's real memorable. He fucking picks this dude up and breaks his back over his knee. And then there's this other dude... He gets hung up on, he picks him up and throws him on a meat hook and like the lights are flickering like it's a strobe light and you hear this southern preach in the background like, the Lord will bless you, great redemption in the pit of hellfire. And meanwhile, he's like chopping the dude's legs up and and there's this weird noise happening in the background and I mean, if, if, if you ain't seen it, Pumpkinhead 2 is a damn decent sequel. After that, it's all shit, but Pumpkinhead, the first two Pumpkinheads are great. I recommend this. The kills, I think, are even more brutal than the first one, even though the movie itself and the story is kind of lackluster. All right, we got three more titles. We got Robert, I mean, <laughs> Peter Fonda and Warren Oates and Race with the Devil. Yes, awesome flick about a cult, kind of following some people there on a trip. This movie kind of puts me in the mind of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, just the grittiness in the back road. I, I don't know, but anyway... It, it actually has one of the dudes from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That dude that was in the wheelchair, you know, Franklin, he took my picture. He's one of the dudes in the cults that are chasing him in this, but has a very memorable ending scene. Well, there's two endings, well, three scenes that I'm going to mention about this movie. And the, um, there's one part, they, they go in a restaurant, and they have a good time, they meet these people, and then they come back and they've done killed their dog. The dog's like hanging from a... Uh, a wire and normally i hate animal cruelty but it's something about this scene i permitted it because it's just oh man it delivers and then they're going down the road and they find there's two rattlesnakes in there they didn't put in there it's fucking it's crazy man i mean snakes scare the shit out of me like you know i was talking about halloween three of course and i mean the snake scene in this is no exception it's great and the ending scene they finally catch them and they like light a huge fire around their camper and it's like you just see that overhead view and you see them like they know they're not going to get out. They're either going to burn to death and them dudes are going to come in there and rape them and torture them. And it doesn't show what happened, but it leaves it up to your imagination that something fucked up happens to them in the end. But yeah, this movie delivers, dude. A race with the devil. Good stuff. All right. We have a Friday the 13th, the first one. Uh, I got the... Got it on Blu-ray in the box set, of course, but I figured I'd show off the singular title. But, I mean, what can I say? I mean, first Friday 13th, Jason's not the killer in this one. But it's just so much fun. Can't get enough of it. Always watching it. Last flick on the least. Last but not least, Stephen King's The Stand. Y'all all know about this. I mean, I'm sure you, some of y'all have read the book and some of y'all have seen this. And... Lot great cast and just a really long great story and you know it's it's the fucking plague man I mean it's it's a real downer and there's there's you know for a movie that's what is this PG thirteen no it's not rated I mean it you know it's probably like a PG status you know but it it has some scenes that really deliver in it and it's you know it's it's killer. I don't know. I'm tired. I don't know what to say. But the last movie on the list is The Stand. Uh, you dudes, please watch this movie. Shoot me a comment. Tell me if you dig what I'm talking about. Let me know if there's reason for me to keep going and making these videos. Do y'all even give a shit? If y'all are watching this, I do thank y'all so much. But yeah, top 50 most watched movies of the present day. Check them out or send me a message if you got a question about any of them. Peace, motherfuckers.